Welcome to Market Analysis for the week of September 21st to 25th. My name is Raman Gill. Before we get going, just a quick disclaimer. This is for educational purposes only. If you have questions about your individual investing needs, I recommend talking to an investment advisor. So we'll take a look at the economic news to start things off. Then we'll get into our technical analysis and finally wrap things up with the commitment of traders data. So let's dive in. This week, we have uh, elections, Greek elections, and we have learned that the pri that Prime Minister Cyprus party has won the election. So things are back to the, the way they were before he resigned. Going into Monday, we have uh, at 8.30, we have wholesale sales number for Canadian dollar. We have existing home sales data for the US dollar, and we have FOMC member Lockhart speaking. At 2.45 p.m. Eastern, we have Bank of uh, Canada Governor Polos speaking. Other than that, it is fairly light for data flows. On Monday, we have um, only one critical data or um, red news, which is Bank of Canada Governor Polos speaking. It is a bank holiday for Japan. And in the Asian session, we have 9.30 p.m. Eastern, we have Australian dollar HPI numbers coming out. Going into Tuesday, we have a fairly quiet session again. In the Eurozone, we have trade balance for Swiss franc. We have uh, British pound public se sector net borrowing. Going into the U.S. session, we have consumer confidence numbers for the euro. And we have Richmond Manufacturing Index for the U.S. dollar. We also have, um, again, we have FOMC member Lockhart speaking again. Going into Wednesday, this is when things get interesting. We have um, French flash manufacturing PMI number for Euro. We have German flash manufacturing PMI number at 3.30 a.m. And then we have flash manufacturing PMI number for, for Europe again. Going into the New York session, we have co-retail sales, which is a really important data point for the Canadian dollars. And then we have um, at 9 a.m., we have ECB President Draghi speaking. So this will be an important release. Uh, market will be watching now that the Fed has not increased the interest rates. Market will be looking to President Draghi to see what he has to say and um, how he positions euro after the Fed has spoken about the interest rates. Last time President Draghi talked euro down, we saw dovish stance from President Draghi. So we may see more of that. So watch out for that. During his speech, we will likely have high volatility in the euro. So keep an eye out for that. At 10.30 a.m., we have crude oil inventories. At noon, we have MPC member Broadband speaking. Then at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, we have FOMC member Lockhart speaking again. So a lot of speeches on Wednesday here. Going into the Asian session, we have trade balance for the New Zealand dollar. On Thursday, we have a German IFO business climate at 4 a.m. Eastern in the London session. 5.15 a.m. Eastern, we have targeted LTRO data. Then going into the New York session at 8.30 a.m., we have core durable goods orders month over month and unemployment claims for the U.S., we also have durable goods orders at 8.30 a.m. as well. Then at 10 a.m., we have new home sales out of the U.S. At 5 p.m. Eastern, we have Fetcher Yellen speaking. Going into the Asian session at 7.30 p.m., we have Japanese yen Tokyo Core CPI number coming out. On Friday, we have um, in the London session, 3 a.m. Eastern, we have uh, German here, Buba President Weidman speaking. Then we have at 4 a.m., we have M3 Money Supply. At 8.30 a.m. in the New York session, we have final GDP numbers for the U.S. dollar here. At 10 a.m. Eastern, we have revised UOM consumer sentiment data coming out. And then we wrap things up with, the, again, German Buba President Weidman speaking out 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Now let's take a look at our technicals here. We have, um, this is the daily chart. Let's start things off with the weekly chart here. On the weekly chart, we see 
price rejecting this um, 1163 level we have um, also have the 50 EMA in this area here this is a bit of a spinner here which suggests rejection on both sides there's a bigger rejection on the top side here and uh, shows a bit of a bearish sentiment on the weekly chart. Let's go on to our daily chart here. On Friday, we saw a big rejection of the move up after the Fed essentially did not raise interest rates and still held their stance that they have been holding for months now. We saw the price getting bid in the euro on uh, before the Fed statement and after the Fed statement on Friday, we saw all of those gains given back. So taking a look at our levels here, this is a bit of a railroad track sort of setup here. So we'll be looking for a potential move up and then a reversal of that. If the price comes back up here at the 14 to 1463 level, this would be a good place to look for a sell, if the, especially if the price holds down here. This would be a nice level for a sell opportunity. Overall, it is still in in a bit of an upward trend here however because we have seen this large reversal we may see pullback and then a move down and especially if it comes down through this level through this trend line we may see a back test of that and the further move to the downside so keep an eye on that going into the pound here we saw again a rejection of the move up this is again another spinning top however this looks a little bit more bullish than the euro did so in this case we saw railroad tracks here on the weekly chart and then a spinner so rejection to the top, rejection to the bottom, it's smack in middle of this range that it was trading in. So now we need to see where, which direction the price will move in before we can actually make a real decision on the, on the trend in this case. Looking at a daily chart here, um, as we saw the price moved up and uh, rejected this level right into the bottom here. We didn't quite get to this 56.84 level. However, there was a nice rejection from the top. So this week we'll be looking for a move to the upside and a potential rejection of this level or moving it to this 56.84 level. Because it's right in the middle of the range here, this is the bottom and this is the top of the range. Because it's smack into the middle of the range we do need to see which way the price will be trading if it comes up here to 5684 level and holds below this level we would be looking for a potential move to the downside if it comes to the bottom towards here 5433 and holds above this level we'd be looking for a potential move to the upside now however if the price moves outside of this range we may have an opportunity for a long setting up on the back test of this level 5684 looking for the price to move to the next level which is 5814 15814 so that will be the next target if the price does hold above the range we'll be looking for a move to the upside and um, to 15814 and potentially to 15927 again if the price does not hold if it just pulls back up and then falls down, we'll be looking for price to come to the bottom of the range. And if it holds below, then come back and test this level again, this 5324 level. So a bit of a neutral stance here on the pound because it's in the middle of the range here. And we just really need to see what direction it will move to. Let's take a look at the New Zealand US dollar here. So we'll start things off with the weekly chart. This has been in this um, in this bit of a range here as well. We see the price went and tested the top side, the rejection, the previous rejection point here, and it has dropped since then. Going into the daily chart here, we see this was the range that the New Zealand dollar was holding. And now we have seen two pins to the upside. So re this is showing rejection, looks kind of bearish here. We may see the price come back, pull up, maybe back into these levels to the top here. If it doesn't break above the range, we'll look for a rejection. If it does break this level, we're looking into going into these lows here. Um, overall, looks uh, still looks range bound. So we could trade the range to the upside here. 64, 62 level could be a sell opportunity, potential sell opportunity. And the bottom here, this 62, 
47.50 area could be a potential long opportunity if it does stay within the range. If it holds, starts to hold above the range, we are looking for move to the 6,500 and uh, potentially to 66.40 here back into the top level here. If it um, drops, we are looking for the 62.50 as the first support level. And then as the price moves down, we are looking for um, 61.93 to so 6200 level and then 61.27 to come and test the bottom of this, uh, this spike here. So that's for New Zealand dollar. Looking at Australian dollar here, let's go back to the weekly chart. We have seen quite a bearish sentiment on Australian dollar for uh, oh, on the weekly chart. So here we didn't quite get the railroad track reversals. We have seen the move up over last week. However, the price came into the bottom here and rejected this. So we see two uh, tweezer top kind of formation here. So now we'll be looking for the price to potentially come back up to 7250 level here and then show us signs of reversal. Uh, if it holds below this level, we'll be looking for a potential move to the downside here, potentially testing the 7100 and then 7140 level right into here. If it holds above these previous highs, we're looking for a move to the upside here, potentially targeting this 7438 area. It really depends on how the price reacts here. If it comes up and rejects, we're looking for a bearish move. If it holds above, we're looking for this area, the top here, 7438 level to be tested again. Going over to dollar CAD here. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. We are still in the middle of that range on the weekly chart. On the daily chart here, we saw a nice kind of pennant formation here. The price was really coiling, tightening in here. And then finally, we saw the break. It came in, did a nice back test of this pennant, this little bottom trend line, and then dropped from there. Again, we can see the price has dropped since, uh, since then. Now, we'll have to see if the price holds above this 130 level. If it holds here, we are looking for a potential move back into this range, bounce off this 3200 level. However, if it holds below this, then we are looking at this 2900 and 2823 level right into here for potential targets. So again, it will depend. It has been uh, dollar cat has been trading in this range and this wider range here. It has broken below the range. It has come and tested this level here 130. And now it really remains to be seen if this level will hold. If it holds, we will be looking for the move back up to the tops here to the top of the range. And if it doesn't hold, then we're looking into this kind of target for this week 2800 we may see the price come if it holds below here the next target will be 2900 and if it holds below 2900 we're looking at 2823 and this is where we may see potential reversal coming into the market so that's for the technical analysis let's go over to our um, commitment of traders data now okay for the euro USD, we see that the dealer long positions have increased. We see leverage and then asset manager positions have gone down. So this gives it a bearish sentiment for the euro. Okay, looking at the sterling here, we see long positions, dealer long positions decreasing. We see asset manager short positions um, decreasing as well. And we see leverage money long positions um, increasing again. This gives um, pound a bit of a bullish stance. New Zealand dollar here, we have a dealer long positions have gone down. We see leverage money, short positions have gone down as well. And asset manager positions are fairly flat. So in this case, New Zealand dollar looks bullish based on the commitment of traders data. Looking at the Australian dollar here, we have seen a sharp decline in dealer long positions, decrease in leverage money short positions. This points to more of a bullish move in the Aust Australian US dollar. That's all for today. I will see you next week again.